Good morning, FII family. It's a last week. Believe it or not, it's April, the 22nd day, 2024, in the year of our Lord. Welcome to our broadcast. We trust you guys have had a good weekend. You've had a good night into this morning. You're fired up. You're ready to go. You got your slippers on the ground, folks. Peace and power. We're wishing you guys a happy week as we start, folks. Yeah, you're a little closer to those dreams. You're a little closer to some of those goals and those things that you've been chasing down, folks. You're a little closer. You're farther along. Welcome, folks. Welcome. We got a lot to touch on this morning. A lot to share with you guys as we begin our broadcast today. A very good morning. Happy New Week to you, folks. How are you guys doing there this morning? Happy New Week to each and every one of you. Peace and power. Happy, happy, happy. Happy New Week. Good to see so many of you on already. At least a lot of comments. Might be five of you, but a lot of comments. Trevor Davidson, Andrew Selby, Kyber Hope, Keyboard Hope, Yolanda, good to have you here. Eula Lafferman Rubens, good to have you too. Uh, Debbie Collins is here too. Morning, Toby's on with us. Althea Galloway is here too. Tuana Green, we see you, Tuana. We see you there. Emerson Holder, not forgetting Emerson. Good to have you there. Lynn Fernandes, Trevor Davidson, Lyndon Gill, Ingrid Ambrose is here too. Yannick, yep, Lynn is here too. Lynn Fernandes, Margaret Nelson is here too. Folks, good morning. I saw you guys at Art Van Eye in the diaspora over the weekend. Some of y'all really run out. Some of y'all really run out besides yourselves. But good to have you folks here with us this morning. Oh, and Don Cook, did I see you in the back? Did I see you part of the crew? Rasta man. How are you doing there, folks? Happy Monday. Like, it came too fast for us. It came too fast. Folks, we trust that you guys are good and well. We trust that you guys are okay. All is going, all is going fine. The weather and everything else, the finances, the family, everything else. Siobhan McDonald, we see you there too. Debbie, Debbie Collins, we see you as well, Debbie. Barbara Ralph, Sylvia Allen, we see you too. Vanessa Andrews, Andrews. Uh, uh, Shauna, 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 Shauna Fortune is here with us. Good morning, FYI family. A very good morning to each and every one of you, wherever, wherever, wherever you all are joining us from. We're just so privileged to have you guys here with us. Yep. So as I said, I saw some of you in the diaspora over the weekend. Saw some of you guys in the in the diaspora. Some of y'all know y'all live later. Some of y'all know y'all able. Oh, what I wouldn't do for get a warmer cup of coffee. What I wouldn't do, Pedal Thorn, to get a hotter cup of coffee. Simone Greaves, I see you there as well. I see. I hope when I come out in the dance for some of y'all run out the same way. <laughs> I don't see it. I hope y'all came out the very same way. Folks, good morning. A great morning to all of you. Pedal Thorn, Margaret Nelson. Margaret says, I was not there. That's sure she's more like you. <laughs> High complexion person. I sure I see somebody. Okay, they like Margaret. Folks, how are you guys doing this morning? We're fired up at this end and we're ready to go. Oh, we got some recommended reading this morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Margaret said, I got clapped to roti. I got clapped to roti. Oh, no, no. Folks, a very good morning, each and every one of you. You know, we're ready to get to it. And we hope that you guys are as well. We've had a quite quite a weekend, and the time doesn't stop. Uh, regretfully, when we're off, and we got a couple of things we want to share with you guys. How are you folks doing out there? Lionel Simon is here. Urban Don, Chevron, Donna Daly, Roxanne, uh, Jonas, Sean of Fortune, of course, and all the other beautiful souls. Loretta Argyle, thank you for that contribution. Uh, Loretta has made a contribution to our channel live. You know, when we were on YouTube, if you make the contribution on youtube we see the names flash by there so thank you loretta for showing up the others thank you so much for that contribution roxanne and all the other folks who are joining us this morning good morning to you win 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 is it cosney 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 win good morning to you i see marcia jackman is here donna george is here as well of course win as i said edward brooms is here too not forgetting edward how are you doing edward Oh, Camille Cox is here to Camille Cox's sad world. Sad, sad world. Folks, we got a lot of brown to cover. 
We got a lot of... Karina Dutch is absolutely correct. Camille is absolutely, absolutely correct. I just want to touch on a, a, couple, a couple of things as we start this morning to set us on the path. Yeah. Some of the headlines making the runs. Margaret, what's one of the headlines making the runs in, in, in your location? You're looking. Oh, we don't buy the papers the morning. That's what we say. The little money you would be buying the papers. Send to us. We could... <laughs> Debbie Collins said, brace it over. <laughs> Deb. Like Debbie Donald's where we really going. Brace it over. Yep. Brace it over. Lionel Simon says he think they were being paid like the whole slave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so many diaspora run out. I saw one social media commentator. I have to bat my eyes a little bit to make sure. To make sure. <laughs> we, got, we got a little television in the bedroom. And last evening, I realized where I was on the bed. I couldn't make out the words. <laughs> I, I, couldn't, I couldn't make out the words. I was like, I realized, you know. I saw some of them run out. Like, is, is, is my eyes or is the right people I've seeing here? Hmm? Is my eyes are. These people gotta put these words a little bigger now on this TV. <laughs> Dolly says it's breezy, it, it's breezy from Ithaca. Uh, we're breezy Ithaca. We envy you, don't we? <laughs> we envy you. Breezy. Breezy Ithaca. Folks, a very good morning to each and every one of you. As we start this morning, a couple of things, a couple of things. The coffee's so cold, I still mm, get to my effects. The coffee. The coffee. Simon Grace says, hold up. Simon Grace says, hold up. Sean says, she don't need roti all over. <laughs> Some of you are bad like that, you know. Sharon said one thing. She don't eat roti all over. Patricia's here. Paulette. Margaret. Right? Margaret. Margaret said she was at the air show in her neck of the woods. That's Sometimes you got to just take it easy, you know. I certain Margaret a thousand photographs with every plane. Every flying object at an air show. Margaret got photographed. <laughs> well photographed too, folks. As we start this morning. Let's start in the 592. Before we deal with the folks, the folks that ran out. <laughs> ran to the dance bro over the weekend. Let's start there. <laughs> you see Margaret laughing loud there. Margaret knows the truth. She must know it's not thousand, it's three thousand. <laughs> or five. <laughs> One five. Five photographs to every aircraft. Hot dog gate. Hot dog gate. You know, I like when this government starts acting as though it's so it's so pious. <laughs> it's so it's so pious. High and mighty. They're talking about good governance and how they adhere to the constitution. <laughs> They're not to Justice Sandal Kisul. You know, all is well and good with them. I sometimes be laughing, you know, drinking my coffee like an aristocrat, you know, with a little finger. <laughs> when, when the people be start? <laughs> when the people be start? Just be drinking my tea watching them. Folks, my wife was telling me, oh, I'm, I'm wearing my watch too tight. Look, story here. Right? You see, people see what they want to see. She ain't seen her husband out there in the sun every day. She ain't seen the valid, credible information. I just noticed my hand. She say, wear your watch too tight. You see, story? <laughs> I'm a change man. <laughs> Chasing down valid, credible information. We in region one, we in two. We don't know when you can wake up this afternoon. You know, chasing down the valid, credible information. Right? 
Margaret said, notice you. <laughs> but you haven't said nothing, Margaret. <laughs> you haven't said nothing. Yeah, yeah, what's the story here? <laughs> if y'all can see that. I used to be a different person. She said, hey, wait, what's too tight? <laughs> if I had you today, I got to end up on Kaitro News fan page. So I can it. <laughs> That's how sometimes the marshals go along the road, you know. <laughs> Somebody got to keep quiet. Somebody got to keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, welcome. Hot dog gate. Hot dog gate. There's a letter to the editor in this morning's paper. I love reading uh, letter writer Shamshun Mohammed. Shamshun has lashed everybody. <laughs> Once you... Once you're out of line, right? Once you're out of line, you'll get touch up. Even though, even though sometimes I I fear that Shamshun on the other side. Even though sometimes I fear Shamshun with them boys. But why I like reading Shamshun's letter? It always has a unique, a unique perspective, point of view. And it's short. For those with the eyes and um for those with the eyes and icing all, all of that these days. It's always some fairly short but poignant. Is that the word? <laughs> Is that the word? Fairly short. But always some very, very Poignant uh, points. <laughs> They're always very poignant. And that's one of the reasons why I love reading these letters right? from Shamshun Mohammed. Very, very interesting point of view. And one in today's paper says that this hot dog gate, I know some of y'all don't need the hot dog right away, is an embarrassment to the government. Shamshun's letter is one paragraph. A little kingpin. That's how Shamshun characterized Asef Aman, regional counselor for the PPP in Region 3, and chief organizer. Who Jack Jones said last week in his press conference, he didn't know. A friend seems to know him. We've seen more photographs of Irfan and Asif than Margaret for the play in a day. Air show close to her head. Hundreds, thousands of photographs with Irfan and Asif. Irfan is not the one in the white shirt, by the way. Irfan got on the jacket, just in case. Just in case. But Jack just said, I know Asif. He's a small man. <laughs> Asif is a small fry. That's what the, the vice president would have us believe. But as I said in this morning's paper, Shamshun Muhammad says, a little kingpin is at work in a small community in that hot dog for cash grant, Baldadash. Is it cash grant at the center of the Because We Care grant? That's what Shamshun is asking. Is it cash grant at the center of the Because We Care grant? Where do they get the gall to give themselves such liberties and when cornered can only offer no comment? Where do they get the gall that we say, I know he? <laughs> even, even in a hundred of photograph with Asif. And now Asif at the back, you know, Asif next to him. And the guy in the tour of Waken Arm. Where do they get the gall to give themselves such liberties? And when Corner can only offer no comment, an embarrassment has been caused to the government, and there must be consequences. Not by Jack New Stone. Not by Jack New Stone. Shamshun Muhammad says there must be consequences. You think that can happen? You think that can happen? Glaringly, we saw in the Tupui contract. Glaringly, 
breaches of the Procurement Act. Glaringly, we saw it. The Procurement Commission said, we can't do nothing. But we come in there. Over the weekend, very the Procurement Commission said that they did some outreaches. They did some outreaches to, I think it was Region, region 2. Yeah. Right there on the ground. And in these sessions, they are <laughs> they are they are educating the public on their roles and responsibilities under the Public Procurement Act, the procurement process, and the rules and regulations of the procurement process. Folks, why are they going through the trouble? Why are they going through the trouble? Nobody don't need to know that, according to the very commission. Because once you contract sign, they can't do nothing. So what is the point? What is the role of the rules? What is the role of the rules and regulations? Topics, according to the release from the commission, included introduction to the Public Procurement Commission. The public procurement process, complaint lodgement, debarment process, procurement plan preparation, 10 openings and evaluations. But you and I know now, thanks to that report last week released from the commission, all that don't matter is who you know in the PPP and it's who know you. Is who knows you. So this is in this morning's paper that they had an outreach, educating persons about the process. Sabrina Blue, Lynn, Leslie Hamilton, Lynn Finance, Gail Alicock, and Cummins. So we're wasting taxpayers' money. That outreach alone must be three, four million dollars, five, six, seven million dollars. But what is the purpose? Because there's been broad acknowledgement since the publication of this report that the Public Procurement Commission is not functioning as it should. So we're wasting time. It's who you know in the PVP, and it's who in the PVP knows you clearly. Clearly. Because as we're on that, Gwyneth. Patricia Luan Hall, Gavin Jacobs, Leslie Hamilton, Roxanne Gary, Terence Lewis. This morning's editorial is also in the same subject matter of the Public Procurement Commission and the Tupui contract given to Bardness Company. That's the Tupui Group. Bardness. Black coal tea. I saw Bardness over the weekend. I was it late last week. Given big tour. And you can tell from his language, he don't know what he's talking about. You can you can tell from his description of what's happening there at the Bellevue Pump Station. This 800 plus close a billion dollars contract. He don't know one thing he's talking about. And lots of persons said he, he's done even more damage to himself. So an interesting editorial in this morning's Starbuck News. The direction of the Public Procurement Commission. Now, the amount of times we say the name Starbuck News here. Seven news is taking shame of the eye. <laughs> and call us a check for all of this. Um, what do you call it? Call us a check for all of this free advertising. Right? Look, we want you all to get valid, incredible information. We subscribe to Sabbath News Online to ensure that we are always in the know what's happening. Right? It costs us about 12 Let's say 12, 12, five. Let's say $13,000. Every quarter. 
Yeah. It costs us something. You know? Every quarter. Some of y'all think we're out here playing, you know? <laughs> this morning's editorial in Sabbath News is recommended reading, is required reading. Wendell Hudson, Kyle Baino. Good morning, Kyle. Gwyneth Anderson, Chevron McDonald, Andrew Griffith. Good morning to you, Andrew. Joel Ward, good morning. Gil Ali Cock, good morning. And Sabbath News has some, some choice words. Let me just put it that way. Some very choice words for the dereliction of duty by the Public Procurement Commission under the PPP. Their dereliction of duty on this Tupui contract to board Ness Company. They have some very, very choice words. No, one of the things this whole process has revealed none of these agencies are functioning. Whether it's the Public Procurement Commission, it's Cabinet, it's EMPATAB, it's NDIA, none of them are functioning. Right? It's who get the instructions, who's who get the call and get the instructions. None of them are functioning. And this morning's Times newspapers, I see Joel Bagwan didn't saying he's ready to resign. If the Public Procurement Commission did not fulfill its mandate, <laughs> you don't send the letter yet, Joel Bagwan did. You don't send the letter yet. In part of this editorial, Sabbath News says the Public Procurement Commission took all of six months to engineer an abject neglect of its duty to preserve the integrity of the tendering system and to ensure that unqualified bidders did not enter upon public works and thereby endanger public safety and the public purse. That's part of what Stabak News said. They had six months to engineer the abject neglect of its duty. That's what the editorial says. It goes on to say that acting upon a complaint by APNU AFC member of Parliament David Patterson and requesting documents from MPTAB and the NDIA but not receiving all. Put it flat. Why wouldn't the NDIA and MPTAB send all the documentation on this contract and its award to the PBC. First red flag. The PBC was able to determine, however, that Chapui Inc. did not qualify to tender for this contract. It had never built a pump station or any similar facility. It did not have a bank guarantee or bid security. Neither was it a courtyard with all the required equipment for the task. You see how many things, how, in how many areas it fell short? In how many areas of this bidding process it fell short? The editorial goes on to state that Tupui also did not submit as requested an audited financial statement as it was not in existence for a year, another disqualification. Its tender should have been immediately ruled as non-responsive by the Evaluation Committee of Empata, but this was not done. The PVPC, according to the editorial, should have been suitably aghast. That's the word in the editorial, aghast. And what? It had discovered and summons in sequence the evaluation committee of Empatap, the head of the NDIA, 
and the chair and executive and chief executive officer of Empatap to explain all of these transgressions. But none of that happened. None of that happened because Satan can't try Satan. Or as the adage says, you can't try the devil case in Hell's Kitchen. You can't try the devil case in Hell's Kitchen. So, so many transgressions. So, I didn't hear the Attorney General on this, but I've heard him waxing lyrical on the teachers, um, the, the GTU case. And what the judge was supposed to do and wasn't supposed to, he should become a judge and just done the whole story. He should become a judge and done the whole story. I would love to hear him on these transgressions. Love to hear him on these transgressions. And one of the points that McNeil made in this editorial this morning, the editorial says, surely... Even if it did not have the power to abrogate this contract, to void, to cancel, to send aside, to vitiate, even if it did not have the power to abrogate this contract, it could have recommended and urged such to be, or urged such to the procuring entity. It could have advised the NDIA, which was the procuring entity, to abrogate the contract. Given the very egregious violations in the tender process. Egregious violations. And the editorial ends by saying. Otherwise, the huge public works tender system will become a supercharged swamp of corruption. But the PPC, the Public Procurement Commission, completely ineffectual and that is what it has become that is what it's that is what it has become naomi says if you summon critics before the pvc you can cuss them out and talk for the secret well maybe we got to summon him we got to summon board yes again sabbath news is making the point If you don't sanction, if there are not um, repercussions, if there are no repercussions, then the, the, the huge public works tender system becomes a supercharged swamp of corruption. It is already there, Sabbath News. It is already there. A supercharged swamp of corruption. It is already there. Already there. Because the commission has taken the position. Once NDIA or any contracting agency sign up a contract, there's nothing we can do. However, corrupt. Let's look at GCOM. Debbie Collins. When the Hudson, this look a little like GCOM. However, the, the, the votes in the box, we can't really um, have the meeting there. Once in there. Right? If we can find the uh, voters list, we can find the whatever documentation needs to come it, we can't do nothing. That sounds like GCOM all over again. That sounds like GCOM 2020 all over again. The commission said, we can't do nothing. One of the things signed. Sanctity of contracts, privity. Oh, this sounds, this sounds like the Exxon Mobil. PSA 2016 all over again. Once it is signed, that is fine. If the gloves don't fit, you must acquit. Once it's signed, it's fine. Our hands are tied. That's what the commission says. 
Commission say we hang tie up. Sabbath news. I am using Sabbath news again, folks. Understand our methodology. It's not New Nation. A fantastic publication out of the PNCR. It's not the key out of the alliance for change. You all know that's my party choice. I love them real bad. Camille's party choice. I love them real bad. This is Sabbath News. Middle of the road. Sabbath News says the tendering and procurement process will become a supercharged swamp of corruption. My only deviation from Sabbath News is it is already that. That is where we are. Right. So when I see Air Fun and some of y'all friends in the diaspora, oh, click, click, clicks, click, click, clicks. This is the head of the supercharged swamp of corruption. Click, click, clicks, click, click, clicks. When I saw Air Fun receiving word for leadership from UE's, um, the, the University of West Indies Foundation body, whatever their name is. That took him to New York. You know? I wonder. <laughs> Good folks, have you ever wondered? Have you ever wondered? I'm advised that in these parts, we just, we just lost power. I'm advised in these parts, we've just lost power. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a day in, in Guyana. Right? I'm not a day in Guyana. I'm advised we've just lost power at, at our end, which is the folks here, the signal to be to wrap up because it's only so long we can be powered up from our batteries. So that is the advice they have. But I think if this is all I talk about tomorrow, I would not have wasted this half hour we've spent together. You see all of this, and to banter, you see air fun with, and bicycle riding and hugging and switching and so on. This is distraction. Air fun Ali leads one of the most corrupt, corrupt government in the world. In the world. Because as you will see. In this morning's papers as well. The Anand Gulseran column. Accountability watch. Says cabinet. Scampnet. Has a role to play here. Because the cabinet. Headed by Irfan Ali or Jack Leo, I don't know. Y'all know the puppetry that happens here. Y'all know the puppet show. The cabinet had a responsibility to object if it has done due diligence as it should have, if it has done due diligence on this contract, it had a responsibility to object the board nest. But if PVP won't give you a contract, Andre, you can get it. Debbie Collins, if PVP won't give you get a contract, you can get it. If they got a course, Coral, the whole commission of their hand-picked people you get it. They don't mind what laws got to break. What decadence and decay they have to plunge this country into. They're going to get what they have to get. The last iteration of the PP government, it took us 23 years to get to the point we just seen in three, close to four years now. And I'm grateful for the advent of social media. Very grateful. Because they can't hide. 
<laughs> they can't hide, folks. That's the that's the power of social media. Okay. Anything done? Oops. And this part about the AFC said in his press conference just last week. The PPC, the Public Procurement Commission, has abandoned its role and responsibilities for the PPP. Abandon its role. Take a look and a listen quickly. Some of what the Alliance for Change said last week. Member of Parliament David Patterson had complained about the award of a contract to Mikhail Wojcik's company, Tepi. This company was granted a nearly $900 million contract to fraction a pump station in Region 3. Today, leader of the Alliance for Change, Kamraj Ramchitan, said that the majority decision of the Public Procurement Commission is shamelessly objectionable. What has been hidden from the public is that the purported summary of findings of a majority recommendation comprises only of a majority recommendation of Ms. Chase, Ms. Bag Mr. Bagwindin, and Mr. Singh. The minority recommendation of Ms. Rajkumar and Berkeley Wickham is vastly different. The five commissioners had all agreed that the PU was guilty on all counts of serious evaluation disqualification. The PUI's bid failed grievously on every evaluation criteria as found unanimously by the five commission commissioners. The minority recommendation is that, and which is not captured in the summary of findings as presented to the public, is that TPU bid must be deemed non-responsive and ought to have been Retender. He said that it's amazing that a bid that failed so horribly could have been passed by an evaluation committee. He said that this failed bid won favor with cabinet. It had earlier been approved by the National Procurement and Tender Administration Board. The AFC is aware that the head of the NEMPATAB is Mr. Tarachan Balgobin, who has a senior advisorial role at the Ministry of Finance as Deputy National Authorizing Officer and head of its public investment unit. A conflict of interest is most noticeable here. The majority decision by the Public Procurement Commission ruins matters when it ruled that it couldn't offer remedial action. Ramchitan accused the PPC of abandoning its powers under the Constitution. <laughs> That's how what was said. <laughs> Last week, they have abandoned their roles and responsibilities under the Constitution. This is the Public Procurement Commission, thanks to the People's Progressive Party Civic Led Administration. Let me tell you, there in government is corruption to the core, the whole thing rotten. While Ali in the US, Ante Bantering and Mama Guy, Shabak News is in Firish. On the quarantine, talking to citizens of this country about the cost of living. And folks, I'm advising you, we're watching our power levels at this end. We, we have blackout at this end. So we're watching our power stores, and we have to, we, we're going to sign off in just a couple of minutes, um, just to make sure that we don't, we're not <laughs> snapped off of the air. Thank you, GPL. Thank you so much. It's very your friend in the best hotels in the U.S., Mets Hotel is fully powered up. I need going through blackout crisis. At this end. Right. And the high cost of living. So every week, folks, Sabbath News takes a snapshot. Different communities. And it's been doing that for more than 70 weeks now. It asks folks a basic question. How the cost of living treating you Simple question. How is the cost of living treating you? We're going to touch on a couple of them. Not plenty. We're going to touch on a couple of the responses. I might get through three. And then we say bye-bye until our next broadcast. Alicia Henry. She's a 34-year-old clothing vendor. And she spoke to Savage News about how the cost of living is affecting her. 
This is an article in Sabbath News this morning. It's required reading, folks. All right. We, we usually feature about six, seven of the comments. There's more than that. It's about 15 in every, in every edition. It's published on Mondays in Sabbath News. Alicia says the cost of living is affecting me really bad. She lives in Prairish on the quarantine. As soon as I get the money done, she says. The cost of living raise everything expensive in the market. She said, I don't get to save much. When I finish buying food items, when I finish buying things to eat and paying the utility bills, I'm left with nothing. My husband, my mother, and I live together. And both my husband and I are working to support her and to feed ourselves. She goes on to say, we try to cope with the cost of living. And listen to this part. Elisha says, now Elisha says, I sent my two kids to live overseas because of the cost of living. Because of the high cost of living. I sent my children to live overseas. In her words, because of the high cost of living. Right? And for a better life. You mean life and better in little Dubai? Everything gone up in the market. Elisha says, for example, a couple of months ago, a four pounds parcel of sugar was 1,200 at the Chinese supermarket. Right? So it was $800. It's now 1,200 at the Chinese supermarket. Before, a normal size of milk was 500. Right? Natural milk was 500. And something. Now it's 700 plus for the tin of milk. Even the price of clothes, she says, has increased in the stores. Government should consider reducing taxes on food items and also raise people's salary. Or if the government wants to maintain tax on food items, they should consider raising the salary. If people's salary does not increase, people can't have no savings. That is what Elisha says. Petal Manning, 40 years old, a single parent. Here what Petal says. <laughs> cost of living affecting Petal too. The cost of living knocking Petal as well. Petal says most of the time when I go to the shop to purchase items for my home, the majority of things increase. Because this month I might spend 30,000. When I return to the shop, I might spend 35, I might spend close to 40 for the same food items. She goes on to say, I got to try with the cost of living because I'm a single mother. And while one of my daughters teaches, uh, she's awaiting her salary. The cost of some food items gone up. That's what she says. A medium-sized bottle of cooking oil. <laughs> a couple months back was 1800 It's now 2700 A pack of carrots before was 200 and something. Now it's 400 a pack. Petal goes on to say, I think some things will be better if the government lower the taxes on food items. Another thing the government should do something about is the water bill. But so because I could recall when I used to pay like 1960 a month for water. Now, since the media installed, I'm paying more money per month, and the water not treated. I thought she bash doing all of this fantastic work, all this beautiful work there, all this lovely work there at Diana Water Inc. Kwame. Kwame O's or A's, 62-year-old part-time construction worker. Kwame says the cost of living is high. For me, when he pays electricity bill and water bill, he said high. I don't think we should be paying such extreme costs on our utility bills. That's what he says. 
I don't know, and I do not, and I do have jobs around the area sometimes to support myself. He says, I know because the weather is, uh, you know, the, the extreme weather, and so the cost of sugar and rice gone up. But the prices of items too high, Kwame says. And it doesn't come down. They don't come down. Before a bag of carby rice was 3000 and something, the same bag now costs 8700 He said chicken gone up. A pound of chicken was 230 233 Now and again. No, a pound of chicken is $400. Yeah. He said years back, the people had price control. There was a price control system. He goes on to say, I think the government should place price control on food items because we don't. He said, if we don't, the poor man will suffer in this country. Yeah. And those are just a couple of the views. Just a couple. I'm recommending this as required reading. <laughs> it's in this morning's uh, Sabbath news. The cost of living on you. How people are finding the cost of living in Guyana. In little Dubai. In little Dubai. I noticed all the folks that Airfield was photographed with, videographed with. He tell them come back home. <laughs> Close up all these shops, wherever they are, Liberty Avenue or wherever it is. And you all come back, things nice. These folks who were, uh, who were random sampled here, fresh from the quarantine, every one of them, things tight, things, things tight. Boy. Yeah. We're going to put some of these responses perhaps on our social media pages so you guys can engage them. Leslie Hampton said chicken is 500 a pound. It's Mr. Chicken. Folks, we're going to leave it there for this morning. Thanks for joining our humble broadcast. Gwyneth Anderson, Beryl, and all the other folks. It's been a privilege being here with you guys. I'm rushing to close up because I don't want to just lash off. <laughs> it's blackout at our end, folks. Blackout in the 592. Let's do Dubai. It's a power crisis the electricity crisis continues but everybody's traveling the globe receiving these awards from people that you never hear about organizations you never see before and living it up the rest of us we gotta be here battling the blues and the blackouts Gwyneth we see you there Vanella Debbie and all the other folks that's gonna do it Edward Gonzalez and all the other guys the FYI family Happy Monday. Stay safe. Have a great week, folks. We're going to see you guys back on our next podcast. That's our time and that's our program this morning. Stay safe, guys.